This is Q&A with Prof. A, the Ibato kay Doc Bato Medical Physiology Review Series for students. The question thrown to us is, Prof. A, how does the kidney produce a concentrated urine? To have a concentrated urine, the kidneys function as a counter-current multiplier. The kidney has to create a hyperosmotic medullary interstitium and number two, have an osmotic equilibrium of water in the medullary collecting tubules and the medullary interstitium. Simply, to have a concentrated urine and a concentrated medullary interstitium. And we can achieve this by the loop of Henle. Frogs and fish, which live in wet habitats, have no loops of Henle. Their urine has the same osmolarity as their tissues. For, For mammals, we evolved to have loops of Henle. For us to efficiently conserve water, the drier the habitat, the longer the loops of Henle. Sodium is actively pumped out of the thick ascending limb of Henle. The thick ascending limb of Henle is impermeable to water. But with ADH, water is reabsorbed in the collecting duct, increasing the sodium concentration. As new filtrate flows in from the proximal convoluted tubule, water is reabsorbed in the descending loop of Henle due to the high sodium from the thick ascending limb of Henle. The descending limb of Henle is permeable to water but not to sodium. This increases concentration as it goes down the hairpin loop. This is how urine is concentrated in cortical nephrons. Juxtamedullary nephrons are very different from cortical nephrons. The former have longer loops, making them more energy efficient in urine concentration. In addition, they also have a thin ascending limb aside from a thick loop segment. In juxtamedullary nephrons, the mechanism is similar in the thick ascending limb in terms of sodium reabsorption. The main difference is with antidiuretic hormone. Not only water is reabsorbed, but also formation of urea channels in their inner medullary collecting duct. The urea cycle enhances the osmotic movement of water out of the descending limb, increasing the filtrate's concentration of sodium chloride in the descending limb. We call it the concentrating effect. It can also account for the passive movement of sodium chloride out of the thin ascending limb to the interstitium, the diluting effect of the countercurrent mechanism. We talk about the urea recycling. Roughly 50% of medullary tonicity is due to urea. Urea, which is a byproduct of ammonium and carbon dioxide from protein metabolism, is important in urine concentration. It is secreted in the descending limb of Henle but reabsorbed in the inner medullary collecting duct, leading to a urea recycling. ADH increases urea reabsorption in the inner medullary collecting duct. In essence, sodium is actively pumped out of the thick ascending limb and passively reabsorbed in the thin ascending limb. The flow of water and solute is seen in the vasa recta with hydrostatic pressure driving water out of the descending vasa recta and oncotic pressure in the ascending vasa recta, aiding in its reabsorption. The sodium chloride movement is from ascending vasa recta to descending vasa recta due to the sodium gradient created by the thick ascending limb. What is important to remember is that with the countercurrent system, we are able to handle water effectively. The tubular fluid that enters the distal tubule is always hypotonic regardless of the presence or absence of ADH. The final urine concentration in the collecting duct with ADH is hyperosmolar. For more high-yield concepts in renal physiology, don't forget to click the subscribe button.